Welcome back, Cam to Catholic. Uh, so, this is flip number two for you guys. Um, thoroughly enjoyed class today with y'all. Been started grading some of those maps, and remember, you're going to have a map quiz every single D-Day. Um, started grading some of them so far, and a lot of them are looking rock solid. All right, I liked it. It looks good. I like the fact that y'all are getting into it. So let's go ahead and keep going with this stuff, all right? So anyway, we um, left off last with like the big differences between Egypt and Mesopotamia, right? And we talked about how they're both hugely foundational ancient civilizations that are actually going to bring Western civilizations into the prestige that they are today. Now, the big differences, of course, is the fact that Egypt was all centralized government and Mesopotamia was city-states. Also, there was a lot greater trade in Mesopotamia, which was another huge thing. And then, not to mention the fact that there was also greater technology in Mesopotamia. For example, when it came to, what's that stuff that actually moves water back and forth using a system of dikes, ditches, and dams? Good job, Elena. I heard you. All right. So, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, it's irrigation. So, women also had a much higher status in Egypt. There were actually female rulers in Egypt. As we know of, like, we've heard of Cleopatra before, and we have heard of... Uh, Hatshepsut, right? So that's actually King Tut's mom. Um, anyway, now, but one similarity, this P word, polytheistic, that's supposed to be under similarities. I apologize about that. But similarities between them have to be that they both had systems of writing, they both have systems of math, they both have a stratified government, and they both are polytheistic. All right, so let's keep on going. Now, this is the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. Remember, we had that on our map quiz today. Where's the Mediterranean Sea? It's that little area right between Africa and Europe, right? So this is the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. But one of the big showings that I need you to see right here is just the movement throughout it, right? And if there's a huge amount of movement, that means there's also going to be several other different civilizations, right? We are going to talk about four more of them, particularly Hebrews, Phoenicians, Assyrians, and uh, Persians, right? So let's keep going. So the next ones are actually called the Hebrews, right? The Hebrews are from the modern Israel era or area, and what they called at the time, write this down, they, in parentheses next to it, they called Israel originally Canaan, C-A-N-A-A-N, -A -A all right, Canaan. Now, they also were the very first ancient civilization to believe in a monotheistic religion system. Now, you know them as the Jews today. Jewish people are Hebrews, right? Now, Yahweh is actually what they call God. Y-A-H-W-E-H, -E right? Yahweh. Now, not to mention the fact we are Christians have the Holy Bible, and the Jewish community has the Torah, right? Now, ironically enough, the Torah isn't even a, like a book per se. It's actually a scroll, right? And also, it's not really what you think of like the Bible. The, the whole book that they have is called the Talmud, and it has three separate books inside of it. And uh, like, like Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Torah, a lot of different stuff, right? So anyway, but it is the very first Abrahamic faith, right? For example, uh, the Jews and as well as the Christians, as well as even the Islamic people, all trace their religion back to one guy named Abraham, right? Abraham, being from Canaan, <clears throat> actually ends up fathering all of these religions, right? So it's Abrahamic. It's an Abrahamic faith, okay? So we'll talk more about that when we get into class tomorrow. Now, then we have these guys. Like, if I go back a couple of slides, you see all these red arrows everywhere, right? Anybody? The red arrows right here? And how they end up um, in these little orange areas right here? That was these people, the Phoenicians, right? The Phoenicians are a people that never really settled, when you think about it, anywhere. They were a sea people. They were a trading community, right? The Phoenicians. And the big thing about them is that they were off the Middle Eastern coast, they also had a small system of city-states, but the biggest contribution that they gave to Western civilization is their alphabet, right? We still use a phonetic for Phoenicians, right? The Phoenician phonetic alphabet. That's why we call it a phonetic alphabet. The Phoenicians actually gave us a phonetic alphabet, and the phonetic alphabet is spelled P-H-O-N-E-T-I-C, phonetic alphabet. That's when we have sounds with every single letter, and then those letters go together to create words, and then those words are complex ideas, sentences, etc., etc., right? So, for example, phonetic alphabet is like B makes a B sound, and C makes a K, and then A is a ah, right? That's phonetics, okay? So, to keep going, though, we also, this, like, as you can see, the blue areas are all areas where the Phoenicians settled. And as you can tell, the Phoenicians were a sea-bearing people, and they relied mainly on coastlines, right? So, 
last couple of people. This is a big one. The Assyrians. These guys were huge into war, right? They were a warrior culture. They, right up, up here, uh, right next to the Assyrians, but conquered Mesopotamia. They actually lived in what we've already talked about, Mesopotamia, right? They are one of the middle ground empires, but they conquered the Fertile Crescent and all of the surrounding areas, and they're well known for making examples out of fallen armies as a warning, right? They would take guys like heads and put them on sticks and put them outside of villages and everything to warn everyone that they were there. They apparently, in a Jewish community, like slit a bunch of people's throats and then drained it into the river so the people down the river would know that they were coming. Uh, and a lot of this has to do with the fact that they created I want you to circle that word, that I word, iron, right? They created iron working. They had the strongest weapons that anybody up to that point had ever seen. Iron weapons. They held an edge longer. They didn't go bad as fast. They weren't so soft. It was easier to find. Also, they created the very first libraries. So go ahead and circle libraries a couple times. Libraries were created by Assyrians, not for the ideas of what you think. It's because they were stealing all the information that they could find from other communities and then housing it in singular rooms creating libraries, right? So that right there is actually an Assyrian warlord cutting somebody's throat, right? So the Assyrians, very warrior-like culture. So I'll tell you a couple other things about the Assyrians tomorrow. But now the Persians, really quickly, two stars right next to Persia on either side. For some reason, I have such a hard time teaching kids the Persians, right? They all remember the Hebrews. They all remember the uh, Assyrians. But nobody remembers poor Persia, right? Poor, poor Persia. So Persia was actually the biggest and most dominant ancient empire leading up to Western civilizations, right? Now, they conquered an area spanning all the way from northern India, where you saw on that map today. Go ahead and look at your map if you want to. All the way in northern India, all the way over to the Mediterranean Sea. Huge, right? So, And they created the very first money-based economy, They're the first major Eastern culture, and then their war against the Greeks split the East and the West. So they're actually phenomenally important. Like, look at this. They conquered all of that area. It's humongous, all right? So anyway, this is all the way over to India, and then this is all the, the Middle East area, right, with Saudi Arabia being here, North Africa, and Greece. That whole area was dominated by these people called the Persians, right? We will talk about them more tomorrow. Go ahead and get this down. We're going to re-emphasize these guys a little bit tomorrow, and then I will talk to y'all later on, all right? So have a good evening, Camden Catholic. I hope y'all enjoyed it, because I know I did, okay? See y'all then.